guys, happy new year. A belated happy new year. I've kind of taken about a month off since Christmas to, um, well, I would like to say for personal development and to really hunker down and replenish my energy levels, I've basically been playing a lot of Mario Run and I think it's time to stop. It's a great game though. It is absolutely beautiful outside today. It's so sunny, but it's freezing, it's so cold that I've even got my hot water bottle on my lap to keep me warm whilst I'm filming. You can hear that sort of noise at any point. That will be the hot water bottle. Oh, do you want to see what I got for Christmas? It's this seed bomb set from my brother and his wife. Um, they saw this and thought, I've got Kate's name written all over it. And they were absolutely right. I'm actually really excited to plant these. Oh, they're made in the UK and made with a blend of recycled, organic and biodegradable materials. Could this be a more perfect present? I don't think so. And there's someone in my life that I think you guys really need to meet. This is Falafel, the llama. He likes to do yoga despite being very clumsy. I feel like we're gonna have a lot in common because I also have a slightly awkwardly long neck. I don't do yoga, but I am very clumsy. So maybe you could teach me a few moves, how about that? He says no. He's so adorable. He's part of a collection of organic plush toys by a brand called Fluffmonger. And the creator, Jenny Marge, or May, is spelled M-A-J, so I'm not quite sure how to say her surname. Um, she sent me him because I have had my eye on him for a little while and I featured him in my EcoBoost Christmas gift guide over on my blog. Um, so he's made using organic, ethically sourced, sustainable materials. So things like hemp and organic cotton. Uh, she uses organic cotton thread as well for the little details. Look at his <laughs> little legs. He'd make a great Irish dancer. So Falafel and his uh, fluffy friends uh, all had a really successful Kickstarter campaign last year to produce a book, Falafel's Garden, which is just the most adorable story. And I love that his friends go to stores that have got things like a bulk section in there. So talking of books, actually, today's video is about books. And I wanna share with you guys some of the books that I've been inspired by uh, recently. I've done a lot of reading in the last couple of years, especially around topics that I'm really passionate about. Um, and it's kind of reawakened my enjoyment for reading. When I'm looking to buy a book, I'll try and find one that's uh, secondhand, but failing that, I'll just ask my local bookshop to order it in and at least then I feel like I'm supporting a local shop and that money is being redispersed in my local community. Physical books are something I really enjoy owning and I enjoy referring back to them. I've also found that reading information from a physical book means that I'm more likely to remember it and I'm not quite sure why but if I read something from an electronic device it just doesn't quite go in in the same way and I don't find it as relaxing or as enjoyable. Some people are quite content reading from an electronic device, which if that works for you, then brilliant. Otherwise, a library is probably the best option. Um, it just depends on the books that they've got available and whether you're the sort of person that wants to keep them, to reference them, or whether you're happy um, putting them back into the uh, borrowing system. So I think when it comes to these things, you gotta do what works for you. And I'm the sort of person that likes to have the books to physically reference if I need to. So without further ado, here are some of the books that have inspired me recently. And make sure you guys stick around because I've got a little giveaway at the end. So that's exciting. Unprocessed by Megan Kimball, where she tries to live a whole year without eating any processed foods. And along the way, she learns about what processing happens for certain foods and how they've become such a common thing in our everyday lives. I also found it really interesting because she looks at things like GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and highlights how even if they aren't labeled as an ingredient, they can still be used as part of a process for making a food. I first came across this book after seeing a little video on YouTube where she was doing a TEDx talk talking about her year unprocessed. I'll try and link it in the info box below if you want to check it out. Cooked by Michael Pollan. Now you guys might have seen a, a four part series on Netflix of the same name based on this book and Michael Pollan features in it. And it looks at the four processes that foods 
go through and it ties in with the four elements so earth fire air and water and how those transformations have made a variety of foods far more um, available to us as a species and just how they've impacted on our growth and evolution as well. And he meets some really cool, interesting people. Some of them you'll see in the documentary series and some of them are just in the book. Um, but after watching that, I felt compelled to read it. And as is often the case when it comes to things on screen and things in books, you get so much more information from the actual book. Um, and he writes about it from a very sort of personal point of view and his natural curiosity kind of leads him on a journey. Another book by Michael Pollan, I'm really into him as an author, he's got some really interesting books, uh, it's called The Omnivore's Dilemma. I really enjoyed how he starts off talking about corn and how that has had such a huge impact on agriculture and how it's become quite a modern day food in the fact that it's very highly processed, it's in the majority of uh, processed foods and it's very prevalent in the modern Western diet. It's light, it's entertaining and it's full of really interesting information. Um, it's, this is probably one of my favourite books actually. And another absolute favourite must read is The One Straw Revolution by Masanobu Fukuoka. He's a Japanese scientist turned farmer. Some really thought provoking messages in the book and I found it really resonated with how I feel about the world. And much like the quote on the back says, after reading it I felt compelled to tell everyone about it so I'm telling you guys now. Up next it's Slow Death by Rubber Duck, The Secret Danger of Everyday Things by Rick Smith and Bruce Lowry. I just finished reading this one, um, I think I finished it last week, and I read it really quickly. And basically the two authors, uh, Rick and Bruce, exposed themselves to eight different everyday commonplace toxins. So things like um, chemical fire retardant, BPA, mercury, you get the idea. So they spend a couple of days doing an experiment and they speak to various experts uh, about how these toxic chemicals are initially getting into our systems, um, how they've become more and more prevalent over the years and it talks about kind of industry as well as government policy. Um, they are Canadian but they do look at it from a kind of global perspective as well. It's just kind of opening up our eyes to the things that we might not think to question. I always feel like I want to read it again just as a refresher because it's got so much information in it. It's a lot to process, but they deliver it in a really digestible way. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed reading that. Joanna Blythman's Swallow This, and that's perhaps the scariest looking selection of lettuce leaves I've ever seen. Joanna Blythman is a food author, a food journalist, and she investigates the food industry, so serving up the food industry's darkest secrets. And she looks at the different techniques or processes that are employed by the modern day food manufacturing companies in order to create something that's starchy or something that's sticky or sweet or a certain colour. Um, and she even talks about packaging as well and how certain foods, things like, think of a bag of salad leaves, how it manages to stay fresh and perky and green um, even though it's travelled from halfway across the world. It's managed to survive that journey, it looks great when it's on the supermarket shelves. We bring it home, we open it up and then within a day or two of it sitting in our fridge it looks like it's completely wilted. Um, and also things like clean labelling, so how um, food industry manufacturers are managing to put things like berry extract uh, something that sounds very natural and normal and that as a consumer we recognise and go, oh that's fine. Uh, they can put that on the label even though that berry has gone through a very chemical process in order to be extracted. And it wouldn't be a reading list without mentioning Zero Waste Home by Bea Johnson. If you're new to my channel then welcome. This book is such a brilliant eye-opener when it comes to things like packaging. If you are regular to my channel then you'll know how much I love this and uh, what a game changer it has been for me. Another amazing book that I read but I have since given to charity because I didn't feel the need to keep it but I found it really useful was Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin and it's basically about creating habits and how um, certain people find it easier to adopt a habit 
and what the best way for different types of people is to approach a new habit. So I found it really interesting because I was just starting to work out what sort of person I was and why I wasn't being very productive at certain times of the day and I was kind of giving myself a bit of grief or a hard time about it. So I read that book and it really just made me feel okay about the fact that I'm more of a nocturnal person and my mind at night becomes completely like, that's a great idea, let's do that. So I don't feel guilty about staying up late every now and again now to kind of get work done. That's just who I am and I need to embrace it in order to be the most productive person I can be. If you are looking to create a good habit or break a bad one, uh, then she talks you through that as well. And the book that I'm currently reading at the moment, I'm about, I'd say around halfway through. It's called Tox In, Tox Out by Bruce Lowry and Rick Smith. And these are the same guys that wrote uh, Slow Death by Rubber Duck. Um, and it says, getting harmful chemicals out of our bodies and our world. So uh, this time around, they're looking at how to remove the toxic chemicals that build up in our bodies through exposure to um, things in everyday life and also how to reduce our exposure to them as well. So they start off looking at things like organic beauty and organic food and whether that really does have an impact on reducing our pesticide levels in our bodies. And they kind of use themselves as guinea pigs again, much as they did in Slow Death by Rubber Duck. So there you go, those are the books that have inspired me recently. I've got uh, quite a few sitting on my bookshelf at the moment that I'm really excited to read in the coming months and I'll share those with you in another video. Now on to the giveaway! It's a book called My Zero Waste Kitchen and it's just been released, it's published by Dorling Kindersley and I've actually got three copies of this book to give away to you guys. Um, now for the giveaway, you need to have a UK delivery address. So if you've got a friend who lives in the UK who could then pass the book on to you, then feel free to enter the giveaway. All the information will be in the info box below. It focuses mostly on reducing food waste and storing food properly and basically helping you use up those common leftovers uh, in inventive ways. And there's certainly some information in here which I suspect most people won't know about. There are 10 recipes inside, each are kind of flexible, so if you don't have an ingredient there are suggestions for other things that you could use, which I think is a great idea. So the link to enter the giveaway is in the info box below, and good luck if you do decide to enter. Thanks so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video remember to hit the thumbs up button, and if you haven't already I would love it, love it, if you would consider subscribing. Oh, uh, he says you should subscribe. Seriously, I would I would do what he says. <laughs>